Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to insert Waves Super Rack Performer on your main left right bus or a matrix using your Behringer Wing and the USB card that is built in to the Behringer Wing. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where it's starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, I've been releasing a couple of these videos about the new Waves Super Rack Performer. And honestly, it's a great program that allows us to use our computer's CPU processor to be able to use Waves plugins live by using your computer's processor and your computer's USB connection to your Behringer Wing. So you can use the built-in USB card on the Behringer Wing, route all of your audio out to your computer running Wave Super Act Performer, and then back into your console, and then out to your PA. Now this program is fantastic for being able to insert a couple of your vocal microphones into Super Rack Performer to use a couple plugins, maybe use Auto-Tune or some of the classic compressors that they have. Or in this video, I'm gonna show you actually how to get a stereo send from your main or matrix out to Super Rack Performer and then back in. So what I have here is I have an oscillator just doing some pink noise on my channel one. We can hear that coming through the PA right now. But what I wanna do is I want to be able to insert racks in Super Rack Performer on my Matrix One in this case. This is where my main PA is. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to reach for my insert point on my matrix. So I have my matrix one selected here, and you can also do this similarly with any of the main buses. So if you wanted to do this on your main stereo bus, you definitely could. But in this case, I'm going to be doing it on my matrix one. The next thing that you want to do is you want to insert a effects processor. So we're going to go ahead and select a free effects processor. In this case, I'm going to be using effects eight, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Now, at this point, I'm going to go to effects type, and I'm going to select external. Now what this allows us to do is this allows me to take my stereo channels from my main PA on this matrix one, send them somewhere, and then return them back into this and be able to put that out to the main PA. And the benefit of this is I would be able to turn it off and have it not be going to Super Rack Performer, it would just basically bypass that, or turn it back on to have it be using Super Rack Performer. Now, a couple of things that I want to note real quick is our effects mix is we should turn this to 100%. If we don't have this set to 100%, if we have this set at the 35% that it is default, then that means that it is going to have 35% of Waves Super Act Performer blended in with the original signal, which would make it latent. Now, one thing that's really interesting is right here, we have the ability of dialing in our latency. So when I was measuring this, I was able to get 299 samples of latency, which was my full path from my audio console into Wave Super Act Performer, coming back into the console, and then basically setting it here. And so at that point, then I would be able to go and adjust my effects mix of before waves and post waves on my Behringer Wing. And now this is a really cool function in that you would be able to dial in the pre-waves and post-waves and blend them together. Now, if you're going to be starting out, I would recommend having our effects mix set to 100 and our latency set to zero. That way we can ensure that all of our audio is being processed out from our matrix into Super Act Performer, back into our matrix one, and then out to the PA. The very next thing that we need to do is we need to set up some of our effects sends and our returns here. So we can go ahead and simply press on our send, and then we can go and find our USB audio output. And we will go ahead and unlock this, and then what we can do is we can go and press 1. Now, once we've pressed one, we are going to navigate on the right-hand side over to our effects send. And in this case, we pulled up effects send eight because we were using effects rack eight. So I'm going to select left, and then I'm going to go to two and select eight right. 
Once we have that set, we're going to go ahead and press home and make sure that our matrix one is still selected. And we can go back down to effects eight. And now we want to set our return path. And as we remember in our previous videos, we would have that coming in on the USB audio. And we can see this as one and two. And this is set as a stereo signal. If you are setting this up and it happens to be a mono signal, you would want to make sure that you switch it to stereo by using this selection up at the top. Once you have that, you can press close. So what we can see here is that we have our send from USB audio one and two on the output. And then we have our return coming in on USB one and two. Now at this point, we're going to move over to Waves Super Act Performer on my computer and get the rest of the audio routing set. So here we have my Super Rack Performer here, and I have pulled up on my setup tab in audio setup. My device is the Behringer Wing, which I have connected on my USB device. I have my sample rate set at 48 kilohertz, which is the same as the Behringer Wing. And I currently have my buffer size set to 128. Now, if you wanted to have the least amount of latency, you would want to go ahead and select 32. If you wanted to have a little bit less processing affecting your computer, then you can go ahead and select 128. In this case, because I am recording my screen, I am going to keep this at 128. But for latency purposes, you should select the lowest latency that you can with the smallest buffer size. Now, when you do this, you are going to find that your CPU usage is going to be higher. So if, for instance, if I went and selected 2048, my CPU would drop down to 1%. Whereas if I had my 32 on the buffer size, we can see that my CPU usage is at 12% right here. So in this case, because I am recording my screen, I'm going to go ahead and select 128. Now, a couple other settings that you have here is you can go into your settings and you can configure it for 4, 8, 16, 32, or 64 racks. So I recommend selecting whatever your configuration that you're planning on using for this instance, I'm only going to be selecting one rack using a stereo pair from my matrix one, sending it to super rack performer and then back to my console. So I currently have four racks selected. So at this point, we can go over to the overview tab. And then up here where it says input, we are going to drop this arrow down, go to stereo. We can see that our wing is right here. And we're going to select channels one and two. And once we select this, it is automatically going to route our outputs to be the same thing down here. So we can see that it is on stereo, wing, channels, outputs, one and two. At this point, we can go and insert a plugin. So I'm going to go and insert my F6 RTA here, and we can pull this open. So one thing I want to mention here is if you add a plugin, for instance, the uh, C6 from Waves, which is a multiband compressor, we can see that there is a latency here of 64 samples. Now that is going to add a slight amount of latency into this plugin chain. Now, if you happen to have multiple plugins that are all very latent, then that's going to cause your main PA to be a few more milliseconds latent in comparison to using plugins that are going to be close to zero milliseconds of delay. Some of my favorite plugins that we have um, would be our F6. We also have the CLA76 is another uh, latency of zero. We can go and pull up our... SSL comp, which is also going to be a latency of zero. And so all of these plugins have a latency of zero. So we can see that here. Now, this is on top of the round trip latency from your Behringer wing to your laptop and back to the wing. Now, I've measured the latency on this. And if you are running a buffer of 32, the latency is just shy of six milliseconds. So it is a six millisecond round trip from the Behringer wing to your laptop through waves back to the Behringer wing. So at this point, I can now turn up audio and we can see that it will be on this effects processor and it is sending out to our waves. So we can see that right here, I have waves. So if I went and turned this down, we would see that my return right here has turned down. 
and I'll go ahead and raise that back up to zero here to get back up to unity, and we can see that that's now jumped back up to our unity gain. Now, what's really neat about this is if you did happen to have a computer start glitching out, you can simply bypass waves by turning this effects processor off. And we have now made it so that our signal is still direct to our PA without going through waves. And if you finally get your computer sorted back out, you can go ahead and turn it back on, and we are ready to go. Now, a couple of my favorite plugins to use on a matrix feed or a stereo left-right feed would be the F6, which is one of my favorite plugins that they have. It is a multi-band EQ, which allows you to just tailor your EQ just a little bit, but it also has a multi-band dynamic EQ portion of it as well, which allows you to kind of tailor some of maybe some of the high frequency that might be a little bit bright at certain times. You can set this to pull those down once it gets up to a certain threshold. And I'll be releasing one of my videos on the Waves F6 here soon. Another one of my favorite plugins would be the SSL Comp. And this is a beautiful stereo bus compressor that I love to use on my stereo bus, especially with a music bus. So some of my favorite settings for this would be of a 10 millisecond attack, ratio of four to one, and we can do our release on 0 0.1, 0 0.3, or you can set it to auto if you're not used to setting your release times. Another plugin that is actually super useful for inserting on a monitor feed would be the X feedback. And that's going to be down here in Other, and it is right here. Now, what this plugin allows you to do is this allows you to ring out microphones with your floor wedge. And what this will do is it will go in Setup, and it will automatically pick some frequencies that are feeding back. Now, X Feedback is one of my favorite plugins for ringing out microphones and even floor wedges because it allows the plugin to find all those frequencies that are going to be feeding back, and it uh, automatically turns them down. For instance, if I was to bring in my sine wave generator here on my routing, we'll go ahead and unlock, and I'll bring in my sine wave that's on channel two here. This is a one kilohertz tone that's being played. So if I was to turn this up, and I would have setup turned on here, and I started bringing this up, this would sound like feedback to our X feedback. And so as you could see there, it started hearing it and it started pulling it down. And so then if I was to change my oscillator to a different frequency, for instance, if we changed this to be, say, 5K67, we can then turn this up, and it is going to sense for it and automatically turn it down. So as you are taking your microphone, you can continue to turn up that microphone into either that floor wedge or the PA, and this plugin will hear the feedback that's happening and automatically apply notch filters in those frequencies that are starting to feed back. And that's why it's one of my favorite plugins for inserting on, say, a lav microphone or a floor wedge. Now, if you wanted to use this same method of inserting a effects rack on a channel, you could. So we can simply go to one of our channels and we can go and insert a effects plugin here. So we can go and add in an external and we can set our effects mix to 100, latency to zero. So we can set this to mono. We can then tap in here, unlock, and go ahead and route effects seven left into our third output here. We can then go and go back to our channel, turn it on, have our return be from USB 3, which is mono, and we can simply close. At this point, we can then go into Wave Super Rack Performer here, go to our second rack, and choose our mono input from being input 3, 
I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm really excited about Wave Super Act Performer. I think it's going to be a very beneficial thing. Now, if you are worried about latency, unfortunately, there's not a Waves card yet for the Behringer Wing. I'm really hoping that Behringer and Waves will partner up and make a Waves card for the Behringer Wing, and hopefully at some point we will be able to have that, and I'll definitely buy one and put it in my wing and make some videos about it for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out Drew Brashler com for more articles, tips, and tricks. And if you haven't become a subscriber of my channel, you definitely should. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you guys have a great day.